Welcome to another episode of Mishmash TV. Can't believe it's my second to last day here. That is crazy. Do you want to know a little bit of a sneaky fact? Mm -hmm. I've actually started my two job two weeks ago and this is pre-recorded. We did this like three or four weeks ago. So there you go, a bit of an insight for you. But it's quite cool that it's playing on here now. I'm probably watching at home. Hi me. Anyway, we are here in the Mishmash studio. It is pretty cool here. Today we're reminiscing on my co-host Evie, Evie Harvey, Yvette Harvey Salter. Um, she was such a cool uh, person and we got to get to journey with her for about eight months and we got to do heaps of cool things and one of them was Kelly Talton. So let's check out that cool memory now. Auckland, New Zealand, city of sales, the Waitemata Harbour and a place for a very fishy encounter. Fishy encounter? Sounds very intriguing. Well, here's a clue. What is one of the most feared predators of the sea? The shark! A shark. <laughs> With their pointy noses and their sharp teeth, they scare us in stories and movies. But are they all really as fearsome as they seem? Well, come with us as we're about to find out here at Kelly Tarleton's getting up close with the sharks. Can't wait, let's go. And keep watching as we may be getting closer than Ken thinks. Kelly Tarleton's Underwater World was opened in 1985. Kelly was a Kiwi adventurer, diver and inventor who wanted to share his love of the ocean. His dream was to display marine life from the Southern Ocean for everyone to see. That meant building a huge aquarium housing many fish, sharks and stingrays. Today visitors get to experience one of Auckland's best attractions. Let's go! Now the sharks are kept in huge tunnels full of seawater beneath the ground with see-through acrylic tunnels to weave their way around them. This is so we can get up close and personal with the sharks without having to get wet, so we get to stay nice and dry. With all the weight of the water above and around us, do some people get scared that it's all going to cave in? Yeah, there are a few people that kind of get scared, but the tunnel is actually made of acrylic and it's 64 millimetres thick, it's about this thick. Whoa. It's also curved and that helps with the support, so it will never really cave in. I understand too that some people actually uh, sleep here overnight, tell us about that. Yeah, we have a sleepover program for kids and adults as well, um, and almost every night of the week uh, through different seasons there'll be people sleeping in the tunnel here under the sharks or next to the piranha. How cool is that just looking up at the underwater world? So out of all these sharks, oh, there's a um, Whoa, stingray. It was crazy. Out of all the sharks, which one is the most dangerous? Out of the ones we have here, we've got something called a sand tiger shark, which have big raggedy teeth hanging out the front. and. They've got a jaw reflex 25 times faster than any movement we can make underwater. So they're Yikes. pretty dodgy to be around if they're hungry. Do the sharks have different types of personalities or behaviour to each other? Um, towards each other they don't really mind, but sometimes we have to treat them differently when feeding them. So they can behave slightly differently and, we've, and we need to get trained on that as we, okay. we work here. So talking about feeding them, how do you feed them? We get in scuba gear and we go sit on the bottom with a bucket of fish and we hand feed them. Whoever's hungry comes right up and just put a bit of food in their mouth. Oh, that oh, sounds scary. Isn't it dangerous? Like, wouldn't they bite you? Uh, sharks aren't as dangerous as people think. If they're really hungry, we have to be careful, but we've never had anybody bitten in 25 years of doing this. What is it like swimming with these sharks? <gasps> It is awesome. I don't think you'll ever get a chance to do something like this naturally, like sharks are around, but they hate humans and they don't get very close. So getting in a tank with them, they're not going to go anywhere and they're going to get pretty close to some people. Yikes, it sounds pretty cool. Now, how do you feel about sharks now, Ken? Oh, well, I, I think these ones uh, seem okay, but I still wouldn't be going swimming with them. <laughs> oh, well, that's good because um, I planned something. What? I thought you might like to have a go. What? what? Snorkeling? Uh-huh. With the sharks? Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. Oh, bring it on. I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, I'm ready to face that fear. Let's do it. 
One of the most popular things to do here at Cali Tartans is to snorkel with the sharks. Now you can watch them here below in the tunnels but how cool is it that you can actually snorkel with them and look at them face to face. <gasps> We've just got it into the shark pool. Um, the sharks are obviously swimming around us at the moment, but we're going to be in just a sec. Evie's just tying up her hair. Now, you've got to spit in these, otherwise they fog up. So, it's the first time in my life that I'm being allowed to spit. So, I'm going to spit in here. There we go. And hopefully, that doesn't go into my eyes. <laughs> Fortunately for Ken and I, we would be kept safe in the water as we'd be enclosed within a cage. So, what Ken, Yvette and Amy are in at the moment is an old ore roasting pit. They're not being roasted, but a hundred years ago, gold ore was poured into these big holes along with lots and lots of firewood. Um, this only happened in the winter when it was wet, but they had to roast the ore to make it uh, crush easier when it got down the hill to the big machines. Oh my goodness, that was so much uh, adrenaline fun, the Tanifa, man. I know, we have been having an Woo. absolute blast on the Tanifa. Now we are actually, we've made it to the beginning of a gold mine. I know, this beauty here uh, started around uh, in the 1800s, it dates back. And we've got our friend Stuart here to tell us a little bit more about this settlement. Now, Waitikauri was actually a township, wasn't it? Waitikauri was a township. In this photo here, you'll see it was the beginning, the early days. There was about uh, 30 or 40 houses here, but it blossomed to around 70 houses. They had a massive processing factory to process the gold. They had two hotels, a school, Wow, and I see here the schools um, are located near the swamp area, isn't it? Yeah, well, Ken, that's not actually a swamp. What is uh -oh. it? Ken, that's the toxic sludge pond. Oh, who was a town planner back in the 1800s? Because that's not very smart, is it? It's not safe. <laughs> all the rubbish, all the waste from the gold processing plant was just tipped out on the ground and lay there until it soaked away, right next to the primary school. Oh, no. Oh. And now, so what, where are all these buildings now? Because this is around here somewhere, right? Yeah, very close to here. I can't see any civilization in amongst these trees. What, what happened to the buildings? Well, you've heard of the First World War and the Second World War? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, after the First World 
war and the Second World War, New Zealand came upon very hard times. And people came up here and they recycled all the old buildings. The small ones were uh, broken down and the wood and the timber and the roofing iron was all taken down into Waihi and it made the beginnings of Waihi. But the big buildings, the big hotels and the schoolhouse, they were taken down in pieces and reassembled in town. Wow, that's so cool. So there are some of the buildings that are still standing now but just in another place in Waihi. Yep, right in How Waihi's cool. main street. That is amazing. Now we're about to go and check out the mine which the entrance is right here. You can see through there. That's it's very dark. Scary. In there, doesn't it? I know, and kind of, it's kind of got a lot of history. 1886 is um, quite a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about the different levels in the mine. Yeah, well, um, the mine follows the seams of quartz that run through the hill, and they're like curtains. If you imagine the big curtains that you have on stages, um, it's like that. It's only a narrow band, but it extends from deep down in the ground up high and it goes through the ground like a curtain and they'll mine it on different levels ah, oh, cool. and then okay. eventually they'll break all those levels into one kind of like this i've just found this picture here is it sort of like this exactly so like there's, that there's the bottom level the middle level and the top yeah some mines would have one two three levels some mines would have up to 15 or 16 different wow. levels that's cool. So we here, we're in the middle level, is that right? We're in the middle level of this mine, but this particular drawing shows the service level, the one with the railway track, at the bottom. But in this mine, it is the middle one here. So when we go inside, we'll have one level below us and one level above us. Wow, that's pretty cool. And um, well, I'm looking forward to going in and checking this out, Amy, so you can come with us as well. When I'm hungry and on the go, <laughs> I like to eat sheep poop. <coughs> oh, that, <laughs> that's sick. She's gagging. Are you gagging? Yes. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just put that in your mouth. <coughs> I feel sorry for Laura. <laughs> oh, can you make sure go? you don't want some? Come on. Here comes the no, plane. No, oh my god, this is nasty. <laughs> I can't believe it. Food's in your mouth. <laughs> this is sick. I'm telling Laura, she'll no, never no, kiss no, me yeah. again. I'm sorry, I'm really gross. <laughs> Does that how gross you are? Oh, not because it's sheep and it's dry and. <laughs> It's poos. <laughs> it's not human though. If it was human, cat or dog, nah. But Ugh. sheep poo, all good. <laughs> Just a bit of dried up grass. <laughs> okay. Alright, now I'm going to light these and then yeah. we're going to wrap our potato bakes, um, but, Amy. Yeah, but it's so important that you've got an adult here around to do all these things because it is very, very dangerous. I can't stress that enough that we've got to make sure we've got an adult around us and we've got a bucket of water in case things get out of hand. And we'll have to use the bucket of water anyway to to uh, let the fire out. So there it goes, it's starting to come away, our wonderful fire. Oh, there it's smoky. And a good old um, can of baked beans, which is great. Yummy. Do you want to take the paper off? Nah, right. she'll be right, mate. Someone singing, my lord, kumbaya. Can you hear that? Someone singing, my lord, kumbaya. I was always known as a bit of a jokester around the office and well this was one where Evie was presenting some news and well I thought that I would uh, chuck a couple of gloves in the air and freak her out a little bit and it actually worked. It was quite funny, you would have thought this was scripted. No it wasn't. Here is that clip, Evie the newsreader. The redevelopment of the Mount Hot Pools has some people up in arms, but Tauranga City Aquatics Limited is adamant the upgrade will benefit the community. Chief Executive Tana Delahunte says the redevelopment... 
Hello? Hello? This minky glove. <gasps> oh my gosh, I can't believe you just did that. Neither can I. We'll see you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you are not putting this on my trash. <laughs> we need to go when you are. Okay, okay, this is this is the last record. Oh my gosh. Take seven. <laughs> oh wow, that woke me up. Breathe. Breathe. Hey kids, it's Mishmash TV with Ken and Evie and we're wrapping up our week in Rotorua at Wingspan. Wingspan, that's right, we're here to check out the Falcons which is pretty cool and our friend Debbie over here is just going to tell us a little bit more about it. That's right. Hey Welcome Debbie, how are you? Been. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, it's cold, isn't it? Oh, a little bit chilly. Oh. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm looking. Blue lips and everything. I know. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing these. Uh, are they called falcons? Yes, they are falcons. But we've also got hawks and owls. So oh. falcons, sometimes we call them kariaria, and the hawks we call kahu. And the uh, owls we call Ruru. Yeah. Ah, very cool. Did you like my play on w words? I'm looking forward to seeing the falcon. <laughs> Ford falcon? Uh, <laughs> bit of a joke yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice on the kid. Um, well, yeah, we're just going about. We're just about to check out a call flight of the birds, which is going to be pretty awesome. They oh, no. end up. Um, I think what's it called when they swoop up to the? When they stoop up high and they're fast birds, and and blink and you'll miss it. They move so fast. Mm. They're they're fabulous when they're flying. That's yeah. amazing. Now. Uh, what are we going to be seeing today on the show? What are we going to be seeing in the presentation? Well, there's a, a little bit of an introduction to start off with because not many people know about falcons and uh, it's on our $20 note. So I, I guess kids, yeah. ask your mums and dads to have a look at a $20 <laughs> note because that's Kariria that's on there. And we're going to show you what they do best and, and the, that's fly. They're mm. pretty rare, aren't they? Like rarer than the kiwi. They're rarer than kiwi, yeah. It's, um, and, and yet not many people get to see them and they don't know about them. So the whole idea of wingspan is to be able to tell people a little bit more and show how special they are. Yeah, well, it's good to get the word out there because I've actually been most convinced in my life that kiwi's the most probably endangered bird in New Zealand, seeing as though it's the, it's yeah. the one that's you know, been advertised everywhere on everything. So yeah. well, it's a definitely learn something new every day. And it's New Zealand's <laughs> fastest bird. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's, that's it, interesting. Yeah, and I see it's quite graceful too when they when they fly, you can't even hear any noise. Why is that? Because they just, just leave silent. Just lie, because these are hunting birds, so they need to sneak up on things oh. and try and catch things, and so they have to do it quietly. Mm. Is there much differences between the boy and the girl uh, falcon? Yes, there is a little bit. The, the females are a lot bigger, which is a little bit different than what most people are, are, are used to. That yeah. Know. Yeah. So the, 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 the guys are a bit bulkier. Yeah, exactly. But the females are almost twice the size of the males um, or the boy falcons. Yeah. Mm. Oh, very cool. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing this cool presentation. So um, let's go and find out more and see some birds flying around.
Welcome back, it is Mishmash TV and you can hear a very cool hawk. That's right, you may have seen these on the road eating roadkill. Well, our friend Andrew is here now and he's holding one, which um, is very rare. I can't say I've ever held a hawk, they always fly away. Um, this is very, a very cool bird. Are these birds endangered? No, they're not an endangered species. In fact, this is the most common bird of prey in New Zealand. Um, and 99.9% .9 of the time, if you see a bird of prey in New Zealand, it's going to be one of these birds. They're often seen beside the road, feeding on roadkill possums or rabbits. Um, that's a food that these birds often tend to go for. Easy options. Definitely, and they look similar to the falcon, eh, I reckon? Yeah, they do, but I, I've heard there's uh, lots of differences between the hawk and the falcon. So, uh, what are the differences between these two birds? One, One of the, of the major differences is that these birds are a soaring gliding specialist, and they specialise in just soaring on those wind currents, very few wing flaps, Whereas our New Zealand falcon is a very fast flying bird. Flies very similar to a magpie, fast direct flights at prey. These birds are the ones you see soaring over the countryside and the, mostly in the farmland areas. Wow, what do these um, birds eat? Because we've seen some of the uh, falcon today and I was just curious to know what kind of meat they were eating. Well the birds um, that we feed, uh, they feed on mostly day old chickens, the male cockerels from the poultry industry, um, and also ducks, rabbits, pheasants and hare, anything which we can get a hold of that these birds would be naturally eating in the wild. And wow. I see that he doesn't like the microphone very much. No, he wants he, to attack it. He doesn't, <laughs> unless he's just wanting to get vocal, he thinks it's New Zealand <laughs> Idol. Well, we're going to see another bird right now, which is a special treat for us Mishmash viewers out there. We are going to be going behind the scenes and yes, we're going to be seeing a, a mopork. <gasps> That was some great falcons there. We went to Rotorua and we got to get real up close to an owl, in fact, that was cool. And these falcons, with, um, they were on our hands, our head even, and amazing that you can train a bird. That was very interesting. Well, right now we've got another mishmash memory of Evie, Harvey, Salter, and us hanging out, so let's check it out. Sup Waikato Bay Plenty, this is Mishmash TV with Ken and Evie and we've had a very cool week here in the Waikato. Now today we're at Hamilton Lake and it's very cold. Here's something, now what do you know about air? Um, that it's brown and on top of my head, unlike our camera guy Paul who's bald. <laughs> Not here Ken, air. Ah. Yeah, well, hmm, don't know too much about it. Well, today we are going to be going up an adventure in it. <gasps> okay, like, um, maybe like jumping up on a trampoline? Not quite a trampoline, but, uh, here's a clue. Oh, what, what do you mean, what's the clue? Uh, okay, going up. Oh, it's helium, it's got helium in it. No, Ken, it's not a party. Whoa, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're Whoa, 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 don't get too carried away. Now, we are going to be going in an adventure in a hot air balloon on Mish Mash. Well, it's getting a little bit warmer now with the sun coming up, which is always good, but apparently before it gets warmer, it gets a little bit colder. It is chilly, and that's why I'm all coated up wearing this big, bright yellow puffy jacket. I feel like a bit of a, a marshmallow in this, but it's great, it's keeping me warm. When we get up there, it's going to be good. It's like a big heater, because, you know, we've, yeah. got the, we've got the fire, which you saw before when we were setting the balloon up. We've got that kind of, you know, right above us, which is going to be keeping us warm.
away about 800 feet in the air looking over this beautiful scenery of the Waikato. I know, the city is so beautiful. H-Town, I have never seen you from this angle before and it's great, a perfect day for it. Blue skies, middle of winter and the uh, fog normally looks um, disgusting to me but up high, it looks <laughs> like an ocean, doesn't it? It does, it looks absolutely stunning and uh, you can also see Mount Ruapehu from here which is pretty cool. You've got the sun, Beautifully. the sun as you can see, you've got the sun reflecting wow. off it so we can see it, it looks nice and white. The Over skiers the... are going to be having a great time today. There's quite a few mountains actually, there's Mount Tiaraha in the distance here which you can see the uh, antenna on and uh, also Mount Parongia which is right over there where we went for um, a helicopter ride. Oh, does it, does it, it sounds like we're running out of gas. So are we running out of gas there? No, no, we're fine. That's just uh, using the whisper burner just to maintain our altitude as oh. we uh, target our landing site. Oh, nice. Okay, if you're well, I'm just double checking. <laughs> don't want to be falling. Yeah, don't, don't want to go through that bear ball again. Now it's, it's We've done a little bit of a loop, have we? Where, where, whereabouts do you think we're going to be landing today? We are looking at landing at Swarbrick Park, which is just straight in front of us here. So yep. we're just dropping down to get the wind that we'll hope it swing us around and take us in. It's really warm up here, eh? I'm loving um, just the, the natural sunlight, but also that little heater up there that's um, pumping the hot air. It's so warm. Definitely it? keeping us warm. It's good because we're going with the wind too. Well, we were supporting the Waikato colours there, the black, yellow and red, and um, it was so cool being up that high over Hamilton City, and um, we saw your house, it looks pretty clean, that's your right. backyard's a bit messy though. We saw you waving, <laughs> mishmash just for fun, that's what we do, that's who we are. Now you guys, tune in next week, and we will see you then. Bye bye. bye! Some great times we had with Evie, and well, that brings us to the end of today's show, but I just remembered this week's giveaway, if you haven't already entered, make sure you do. You've only got to today and tomorrow to do that. Mishmashtv.co.nz, text 0274 prices, or write in PO Box 411 Matamata. What for? Well, we've got three family passes to the movies up for grabs, thanks to Bay City Cinemas, Event Cinemas, and also, uh, that's in Hamilton, and also Base, uh, not Bay City, Reading Cinemas in Rotorua, there we go, had to rattle them off for you. Thanks guys for sponsoring that giveaway. We'll be back again tomorrow with a special guest on the couch. Chloe is uh, going to be in the fuddy, so make sure you join us 7.30, 9.30 and 4 o'clock for the best kids show in the world. Ka kite anō. bye. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group.